It was in the spring of 1865. A great civil war was raging over the land, driving toward a climax, the outcome still in doubt. The states divided, brother against brother on the battle line. And in the backwash of that war, a new breed of men had sprung up. Fontrell. Frank and Jesse James. The Younger Brothers. And a host of others. Renegades and raiders, murdering, looting, pillaging. Riding, shooting, slashing their way through one of the darkest pages of our history. And in the wake of the fierce fighting, law and order disappeared, and lynch law took its place. Towns unlucky enough to be located on the border between the North and the South suffered most. But Border City was different. It had a law of its own. High in the Ozarks, lying squarely on the Missouri and Arkansas borderline, it had declared itself neutral and so became a sanctuary for deserters, cutthroats, outlaws, the flotsam and jetsam of humanity. A crowded, teeming town. Crowded? Teeming? Where is everybody? Up at the lynching. Hey, come on. Come on, boy. Get here. Come on, boy. Oh, I'm going. Malcolm Stewart, you ought to go right straight home. But, Ma, I want to see the hanging. You go home this instant. Where are they hanging them, Ma? Well, I'm sure I don't know, but you go right straight home. That's because we live in a town that's wild but, and Ma, lawless. I ain't never seen a man hung. Oh. Go home. Lift me up, Mr. Boggs. I say it's a disgrace. How can you women stand here and watch it? Shh. Anybody says lynching is an evil thing. Bought a city. It wasn't a lynching. It was an execution according to law. Border City is different from any other part of the whole country. You mean wilder, Mrs. Courtney? Much wilder, my dear Mrs. Stewart. And why? Right now, my right foot is in the state of Arkansas. My left is in Missouri. Missouri is Yankee, Arkansas is rebel. You see that? The border runs right through the middle of the Lead Dollar Saloon. Before the war, this was a thriving, decent community. My mines lay both to the north and the south of it. When hostilities were declared, I sold lead to both armies. During that period, men in gray and men in blue roamed the streets. It was the most dreadful, horrible time we've ever spent. It was lawless. Yes, that it was. Until the respectable citizens appointed me mayor. No man had courage enough to take the job. Then I told the two commanders to withdraw their troops to five-mile deadlines. Or I'd blast my mines and nobody'd get any lead. You bet they withdrew. Good riddance. Border City is now a neutral zone. No one in uniform can come within five miles without my permission. That man wore no uniform. He was making inflammatory speeches, trying to stir up a riot. You didn't even give him a court trial. We have no law machinery here. But this town is neutral, and I mean to keep it that way. Brava, brava. Oh, a very good speech, Mrs. Courtney. It stirred me to the marrow. You're making fun of me, Lance Horton. Me? Oh, not at all, ma'am. I'm strictly neutral. If you wasn't such a good foreman, I'd fire you for such insolence. If you wasn't so doggone good looking. Come on in. What's so neutral about Delilah Courtney? She still sells lead to the Union Army, don't she? Delilah's done more than anybody else to preserve decency. Decency? Why, this town is crawling with human vermin. Delilah's only interested in maintaining neutrality. She says the vermin will exterminate each other. How can I raise my son among such riffraff? And more coming in every stagecoach. So 
peaceful up here in the Ozarks. You'd never think there was a war going on. Yankee Cavalry Patrol. Yeah, fifth time we've been stopped since we left Joplin. Oh! Oh! May I see your papers, gentlemen? Here you are. I suppose you heard. Quantrill and some of his men that are headed into this territory. Quantrill? I thought he was operating in Kansas. He was. Slaughtered over 182 people in Lawrence. Kansas is too hot for him now. Ask your passengers to get out. Is something the matter, Lieutenant? Oh, no, ma'am. It's just that I'm surprised to see a young lady traveling alone out in wild country like this. Sally Merritt's, Salt St. Marie, Michigan. Sue. Well, that's the right pretty name, Sue. Sue St. Marie. Yes, ma'am. May I get back into the stagecoach now? Where are you headed? Border City. You got people there? My brother. Well, your folks, are they back in Salt, uh, Sault St. Marie? No, both my parents are dead. That's why I'm out here. Oh. Uh, is he expecting you? No, I'm going to surprise him. What does he do in Border City? He owns a hotel. I see. Well, if you like, uh, I can give escort to within five miles of the town. That's as close as we're allowed. It wouldn't be that you want to keep your eye on Miss Maris as long as possible, would it? Could be. Two men. Bury him. All right. 
Set that stagecoach back on its wheels. My name's Quantrill. This is my wife, Kate. And my name's Cole Younger. Well, you and that woman rode down the soldier that was trying to escape. Pretty good shooting, though, wasn't it? It was cold-blooded murder. It was war. My husband says if we don't kill the enemy when we find him, someday he may kill us. I hope so. You're a stupid little thing, aren't you? Is it stupid to hate murder? Uh, you got real spirit, ain't you? I better kiss a mule be like a kick from a mule. Leave her alone, Cole. You got a lot of room to tell somebody to leave a woman alone. We're riding into Border City on business. Pleasure comes later. All right. I can wait. Dingo's got a saber cut in the shoulder. Hurt much? No. Think he can ride? Well, I can ride fine. Let him go to town, the stagecoach. Ain't no use. I can ride fine. He'll go back to town in the coach with the lady. There ain't no need of it. I can ride my horse. The kid's girl shy. Something nobody can ever say about Cole Younger. Dingus will learn in time. All right, put him in the coach. You let us go on back into town? We're going to escort you. Like them soldier boys was doing it. Except with us, you'd be a lot safer. That wound isn't clean, you'll be infected inside of an hour. You worry about yourself. Blood poisoning, locked jaw. I've seen men die from it. Yeah? A horrible death. Then maybe you deserve to go that way. What is that stuff? Here, hold this. It's gonna sting a little. If you weren't so awfully young, I wouldn't even bother. How old are you? <clears throat> Twenty-two. What do you think you're doing? Just wanted to see if you'd ever shaved. How old are you? Why? I don't know. You look sort of fancy and clean. Kind of brand new like. Thank you. You ought to be in school. No, I had enough of it. You ought to go back. No, I had enough. How did you ever get tied in with Quantrill? What's the difference? I'd really like to know. It's not very interesting. You didn't really have any reason at all. Who oh, didn't I? How'd you like to come home and find your father hanging? And your mother all cut up with a broken leg? And your older brother gone away? Nobody there at all? How would you like it? Who did that? A bunch of dirty cutthroat gorillas from Kansas. I swore I'd get even. I swore I'd get every one of them. Oh, so you joined Quantrill? Yes, I joined Quantrill. He didn't even want to take me. <laughs> Said I was too young. But he took me, finally. Haven't you had enough revenge by now? I, I don't want to think about it. I guess that is the best. Forget it. Forgetting comes hard. But you're young. You still have a chance in life. Chance for what? To quit Quantrill and his gang. Why? So you'll live long enough to grow up and be a real man. I am a real man. Besides, I like fighting. Well, then join the army. We're sort of an army. Quantro's an outlaw and a murderer. Treats me all right. What do you wish for? Wishing's cheap. Your nicest, shiniest wish. What is it? Something silly. Tell me, please. You'd laugh. 
part won't laugh. And I won't tell anyone else. A place all my own. A ranch with all kinds of animals on it. Is that all? A girl with red hair, maybe. One that was all clean and brand new. I think she'd want to be married to an outlaw. But I won't be an outlaw. If you keep on like this, you'll be an outlaw till you're dead. That's what they say. There won't be any ranch. Any brand new girl with red hair. There won't be anything. Yeah, I reckon you're right. You think about it. I will think about it. Again. Tell him to come to my office. Yes, ma'am. Dancehall queen. You know what? She's a faro dealer. She'd play faro with me anytime. What if she knows any kissing game? Come on, let's find out. Stand back and keep your talk clean. This lady's come to meet her brother. She ain't seen in ten years. Who's your brother, ma'am? Bill Maris. Bitterroot Bill? You're the sister of Bitterroot Bill? If she's Bill Maris' sister, she must be a real lot of palooza. <laughs> <laughs> I said shut up. She's a genuine article society lady. Now scatter and let her pass. Who's this kid think he is? Jesse James? That's exactly who he is, mister. That's... You mean that's really... Jesse James, my brother. If he had a notch on his gun for every man he's killed, he'd have over 22 of them now. I've been thinking all right about what you said all the time we were riding in. Jesse James. And I figured out it's probably too late already. There's always something I get mad at, like right now. And I never pull this without firing it. Come on, I'll take you. Visitor for you, Bill. Young and tender, ain't you? But what makes you think I need another girl in this place? Yeah, you'll do. Just as long as you're real polite to the boss. And that's me. That's a real nice way for a man to treat his sister. Sally. Baby. Is it really you? If I had any inkling, you... The last time I saw you, you were... I was teaching you to shoot and hunt. The last time I saw you, you were a man. I'm still a man, Sally, baby. The last letter you wrote was so full of promise. Two years ago. You said you were going to be married. Sell the saloon. You were just going to run the hotel. No drinking or gambling. You were going to be honest and decent. We'll talk it over later. I'll get you to a room. You don't think I'd stay in this place? Nobody will bother you. No matter how it might look, ma'am, this is the best lodging place in town. There's nowhere else a lady could stay. John Pablo. Si, senor. Give my sister the best room we have. What I do with your things? Move my things across the hall. Muy bien. Go with him. I'll, I'll be up in a few minutes. Go ahead. It'll be all right. She's got real quality, that girl. This way, senorita, please.
here, senorita? Who is this woman? Oh, she used to be a singer here. Oh, is this the one my brother was going to marry? Yes, but she's been going away two years. Quanto to snatch her right off. She's crashing and screaming. Quantrill? See. The honky tonk man. Don't draw, mister. I chased you with a posse of 60 men. You should have had faster horses. You've changed, Bill. Looks like he's aged 10 years in the last two. Aren't you congratulate us on our marriage? You're his. his wife? His loving wife. I hope you're very happy. I am. I'm very happy. And were you happy that day when he kidnapped you and carried you out of here? I like masterful men. You've got something to say, Maris, say it. Get it over with. Just a couple of short words. I didn't have a chance last time to say them. Let's have them. Goodbye, Kitty. Pablo, play all my life. What are you trying to do, Kate? Rub it in. It's my favorite song. You used to like it. Sometimes you can be the most exciting woman that ever was. But no man alive can even think of being as mean as a woman. Don't you want me to sing? Sure, sing your song. Drive him loony. That's what you aim to do. Go ahead and do it. Come on, Pablo. Women. Take hope. 
She's not satisfied with flaunting herself in my face. She has to dig a grave for me to fall into. Well, she's mistaken. I'll give her some of the pain she's given me. But quicker. A lot quicker. Get a hold of Right yourself. through that lying heart of hers. Nobody's gonna stop me, not even you. Don't do it, Bill. Don't. No, Bill! Mister, that was close. He gets in trouble every time he takes a drink. He won't be taking any more drinks. Satisfied? I, I didn't mean to. Maybe someday you'll turn on me. Oh, no. No, I'd never do that. I heard gunshots. There was some shooting. Who was it? Your brother, ma'am. He's dead, Miss Maris. You murderers. Who killed him? I did. Somebody please get the sheriff. There isn't any sheriff in Border City. I want this man arrested. Isn't there any law here? The law of Thornton is the law around here, ma'am. She ain't interested in these kind of shootings. You better tell her how it was, mister. It was self-defense. Your brother tried to shoot me. He stopped it. Too bad he didn't kill you. I still have the letter my brother wrote me about you. The one girl in his heart. You vile, loathsome murderess. You've stirred up your quota of trouble for today. I'm gonna blast her head off. Let's get out of here and you cool off. I'll be seeing you, sweetheart. I like your spirit. Ma'am, this is your place now. What do you say to drinks on the house? We ought to get things going again. No, no more drinks. I'm asking everyone to please go. Why do a thing like that? This place is closed. For how long? Forever. But you can't do that. This is the only decent bar in town. Your brother wouldn't want it closed. We're not going to let you close. The lady asked everybody to clear out of here. What's going to happen to us girls? You can find other jobs. So we're fired. Take my advice. Hop the next stagecoach. This town is too rough for lace petticoats and pink ribbons. You get out of here. You'll be on hot water all the time. I'm staying in Border City. And I'm stuck with you. Just what does that mean? Since I'm the man who killed your brother, I'll have to protect you, look after you. Of all the arrogant, conceited, despicable... You're gonna need protection. And I'm morally bound to... If you're morally bound to do anything, it's to get out of here before I shoot you the way you did my brother. What with, the powder puff? I'll find a gun. Pablo! Try this one. You think I won't? I'm waiting. You didn't shoot him in self-defense. No? It was a cheap, common fight over that woman. Well, why don't you pull the trigger? How long have you been handling guns? Still think I need a big, strong man like you to look after me? Yeah, I still think so. for you over three hours ago. It's a big town. It took me three hours to get here. No need to sit down. You sound sore. And serious. Still getting rich on those lead mines of yours? 
I don't reckon it's any of your business. I was hoping to make you richer. I've got a little Yankee gold I'd like to trade for a lot of lead. So you can raid and shoot up a few more helpless towns the way you did Lawrence, Kansas? Nothing doing. And what did you want to see me about? I'm mayor now, and we have a strict military neutrality here. I'm neutral. Haven't even molested anybody in town. You've got no complaint against me. Neutral, are you? You killed five Yankee soldiers on your way into town. Well, they dealt the cards. And you held all the odds. Four to one. You and your boys are not neutral. Never have been, the way I see it. I want you out of this town in 24 hours. Otherwise, I suppose you're going to personally kick us out? Otherwise, I'll let the Union troops come in and take you out. There's a good-sized garrison quartered a few miles north. Oh, they'd really enjoy getting their hands on you, especially after today. Now, Git. That's what I like about you, Delilah. You don't spit and scratch. You punch. John Pablo of the Lead Dollar Saloon said he recommended you to ask for a job in my office. Yes, that is what I came about. You see... We have no jobs open. Well, can you tell me any other place where a girl might find work? Spinning a roulette wheel in a saloon? No. I mean a respectable position. Trying to reform, dearie? I have nothing to reform about. Oh, no? We've seen you riding into town with Quantrill and his gang. And his type ain't exactly... I had no choice in the matter. You and young Jesse James together in the stagecoach. I didn't know who he was. And if I had, it wouldn't have mattered. He's only a boy. What is it you want us to do for you? Find honest work. Is there a school teacher in town? You're asking for the job? I think I'm qualified. Not for my child, nor mine. You have no children. You're not even married. Girlie, you might as well know. We got the best and worst people in Border City. And we classify you. Because my brother owned a saloon. We've seen how men look at you. I'm as respectable as any one of you. I was not my brother's keeper. And I don't make snap judgments about strangers. Or condemn a woman because she's attractive to men. And furthermore... Good day, girlie. Nothing but law and order. And there's nothing I hate worse. Too hard to make a dishonest dollar. Yeah, give me a wide open border, Tom. Well, well, if it isn't little Nell, all bathed in tears. I'm sorry. Oh, think nothing of it. Where will you go? New town, new job. We have to eat. Maybe you should stay here. I'm going to sell the saloon. Probably the new owner will keep you. What are you going to do? Go back to your Sunday school class in Michigan? I'll be leaving as soon as I get the money from the sale of this place. Oh, you're liable to be around a long time. Why? Well, when you inherited the lead dollar, you also took on all its debts. Debts? Mm -hmm. Your brother gambled, senorita. Very bad luck. How much does he owe? Almost twice as much as you get for selling a saloon. You know, if you're smart, you'll take off out of here before the buzzards start circling around with their IOUs. I don't have any money. Not even stagecoach fare. Well, welcome to Poverty Road. Well, how about a farewell snort? Yeah, I could do with a good stiff shot. We take you with us, but I'm afraid you wouldn't like it. It's a rough road. Yeah, and a long one. Here's to the end of a soft touch. There must be something we can do. Yeah? A friend of mine did it once, with an old razor. Why don't you reopen this place? It makes money. 
She wouldn't have the nerve. Oh, wouldn't I? We will reopen. Yeah, who's gonna run things? I will. What are you gonna serve to drink, sarsaparilla? Shut up, Jenny. Do you mean that? Of course I mean it. You can all continue at your jobs. Yee-hoo! And I just spent half an hour packing my clothes. You can unpack them. And the souvenirs. We'll all work hard and pay off my brother's debts. Uh, do you think you're the type to be a hostess in a saloon? Well, what do I need? Besides a fancy dress. Oh, sister. You need a painted smile that don't wear off. Cheek rouge that don't show tear stains. A brassy whiskey voice and a big hello. Hello, hello. Come right in. The place is yours, gentlemen. Why, my heart. Hello. What are you trying to prove? This place is closed to you. Find somebody who's man enough to throw me out. I asked you, what's going on here? Can't you see? You know what they call a woman who runs a saloon? Honky-tonk queen. Well, is that what you want to be? How am I doing? No good. And you're closing up again. Oh, no, I'm not. Look, it's one thing to watch out for a girl with a decent reputation, but trying to protect a lady saloon keeper... Oh, it's yourself you're worried about. A kid who doesn't know the difference between a tea party and a drunken brawl... You're afraid you'll get hurt. Rubbing elbows with the scum of the world. For the last time, I don't need you to worry about me. All right. I've stopped doing it. You're on your own. Thank you very much. Pardon. So long, Queenie. What is it? Juan Trail. with your boss last night. She gave me 24 hours to get out of town. You don't have much time. One hour. I'll take a chance, though, on another 12. Sure. We'll take a chance. <laughs> she can call in the Union Army in an emergency. That's her deal. Wonder what she'd do if she knew her foreman was selling half of the Yankee lead to the Confederates. Her southern mines have petered out. The books balance. It's a 50-50 deal. What if she knew he was a captain in the Confederate Army? Let's start all over again. What do you want? Lead. You're gonna sell it to me. For Yankee gold. Oh, no. You didn't say no two years ago. Two years ago, you and your gang were considered allies to the Confederacy. You mean we ain't now? Not since General Lee disowned you. Hold it. You've used our cause as an excuse for looting and raiding and massacre. You keep on and we'll massacre you right here. No, we won't. Because he's going to sell us that lid. You're not with the Confederacy anymore. You never were. Why don't we give him a little lead? We want him alive. Don't worry. He'll do what I tell him. You're wrong, Quantrill. If the Union Army finds out you're a spy, you'll be shot. If the people of this town find it out, you'll be lynched. Unless you change your tune, both the Yankees and the good citizens of Border City are going to know exactly who you are. Blackmail, huh? That's right. Real beautiful black. I think you'll see it our way, or you're a dead man. So when do we get our lead? Give me time to work it out. I'll let you know. I don't trust him. He's a real soldier boy type. Yeah. He's got a Confederate flag in place of a brain. Don't worry about it. He'll sell us the lead. Well, if you're so sure of it, let's go to Lead Dollar Saloon and celebrate in advance. Cole's hankering to see that gal again. He can't get her off his mind. He better. Dingus is stuck on her. No, I ain't. I just know she's real nice and too good for Cole Younger. Keep your nose out of this, Dingus. She's a saloon girl now and ain't too nice for anybody. I was a saloon gal. That's exactly what I meant. Easy, Younger. And don't forget that Kate is my wife. Comes time to leave this burg, I'm gonna get me a wife. Same way you did. Hello, hello. Mr. and Mrs. Quantrill. 
My, my. Look who's turned into a barroom butterfly. You envious? I look my nice in that dress myself. The men aboard a city must be very happy tonight. That won't be for long. Hello, beautiful. The drinks are good in the game square. Step right along and enjoy yourself. I like it better right here. Then by all means, stand right here. Wait a minute. Not so fast. You better start getting used to me. Indeed. Why? Why? Because you got the most kissable lips I've ever seen. You don't sell anything in here but liquor. I don't buy kisses, I take them. Palms of my hands are getting mighty itchy. You better stay out of this dingus. You better have a drink with the boys. Don't forget what I said, chicken. We're gonna see a lot of each other. Boys, let's baptize this place. Got one too many lights. Watch this. You didn't have to hit me. Just a gal who wanted some good, clean fun. What's the matter with you? You've been edgy ever since we walked in. It's her. The way she looks at me. Like I was dirt. It's not my fault her brother got killed. Have your drink. And it was your fault. I'm real sorry to see you taking over a place like this. There's nothing else I can do. It sounds like what I told you when you asked me why I joined up with Quantrill. Well, you can still quit Quantrill. No, I never can. And I've heard it said once a girl starts working in a saloon, she never can quit either. Funny. When we first met, I was trying to save you from a bad life. Now it's the other way around. Well, there's no way out for me. There really isn't. My brother owed debt. All right, if I... you're going to stay here, then at least do one thing. Yes? Keep away from Kate Quantrill. She hates you. She's real trigger-happy with that gun. She's a real killer. She's more cold-blooded than any man I've ever seen. Now watch out. If you give her the slightest excuse, she's going to try to kill you. I'll remember that. You're my friend, and I don't want nothing to happen to you. That's why I told you. Listen, everybody. Listen. Zeb has big news. Troops of the Confederate Army are one mile the other side of town and pitching camp. Looks like they're making plans. Sure, you got it right. That'll put the Yankees on the run. What does that do to us? Yankees over here! Rebels on this side. I got something important to tell you. Did you hear? The Southern Army's a mile outside of town. I'm drinking to the glorious South. <laughs> You're liable to have trouble in here any second. About half these people are Yankees and the other half are rebels. You better circulate. You better calm them down. The least little thing right now could turn this saloon into a bedlam. John Pablo, and all the news we just heard, I demand you play Dixie and I'm gonna sing it. Oh, no, I won't play that. I say you will. Play Battle Hymn of the Republic and we'll dedicate it to President Lincoln. I'm gonna sing Dixie and dedicate it to President Davis. Neither song will be sung. Who asked you? You're trying to start a riot and you're not gonna do it. I'm gonna sing Dixie with or without a piano. Are you trying to turn this town into a battlefield? I order you to leave the premises. Oh, I wish I... <laughs> fight than the one between the North and the South. <laughs> Your future bride is quite a wildcat. <laughs> this about? When Kate Quantrill heard the feds were moving up, she started to sing Dixie. There would have been a war in here. Sally's trying to keep it neutral. Well, I was afraid of that. I'm going 
going to be needed. Couldn't have done a better job on cake myself. Contrail, your 24 hours are up. I guess my watch must have stopped. You better wind it, and fast. Kate's gonna want revenge. I don't think she'll be back. You don't know her. You better lay low till we're out of town. Close the bar. That's all for tonight, gentlemen. This time, there's nobody arguing with you. Ain't nobody wanting to train with a wildcat, ma'am. She'd had her way, there'd have been a lot of blood spilled. You saved a few lives doing what you did. Come on, Sally. Almost as good as new. Maybe. But I don't feel the same anymore. <laughs> it was the best cat fight I've ever seen, bar and none. A raw, rugged, rough and tumble gal, eh? Honey, I'm proud of you. Yes. Hanson's making signals at us. Is it all right to leave you here with him? You just said I was rugged. Well, so's he, they say. If he gets out of line, just scream. He won't get out of line. What makes you so sure? Now that I'm a full-fledged saloon girl, I'm fair game. Is that what you mean? No. I mean that you're beautiful. And very kissable, I suppose. Could be. I'm sorry. I'm being very bitter. That goes with the job, doesn't it? A thick smile and a snappy answer? I owe you an apology. About my brother, I've learned that the truth. I was unfair to... It doesn't matter. I was pig-headed. With grief, the shock, that's all. Because you're right. I do need your help here. Couldn't we make a, a business arrangement on a partnership basis? You could uh, sort of police the place, kick out the rowdies. You're certainly man enough to... Why, what's the matter? I just lost the business opportunity of a lifetime partnership with you. You're turning me down? I have to leave Border City. I should have been out of here a couple of hours ago. I'm running a risk every second I stay. Why? What's the matter? Let's go downstairs. The place is empty now. These thin walls sometimes have ears. Oh, you're in trouble. Not if I keep on the move. here on the balcony. I'm going to trust you, Sally. May I? Yes. Quantrill has made it impossible for me to stay here. Quantrill? I'm an officer in the Army of the Confederacy. Our lead mines in Arkansas petered out two years ago. I was assigned to undercover work. I got a job as foreman of the Union Mines in the Missouri side, so I could slip lead over to my forces. You're a rebel. Tonight, Quantrill threatened to expose me. Oh, if he does, you'll be lynched. But as a spy, you'd be... I sent a signal to my troops to move in and pitch camp a mile out. At daylight, I'm to lead them to the mines. They're waiting for me now. Canton won't make a move till I show up. Oh, you could have been with them hours ago, safely out of town. Why did you come back here? You know all the people of Border City... Why do you suppose I came back here? I think I know. You wanted to say goodbye to me. If I could take you with me, I would. Proud of having to leave you here with this bunch of renegades and drunks. I'll be all right. I'll be waiting for you. If we take the town, I'll see you right away. 
And if you don't? When the war is over. And if you're killed? I won't be killed. Please don't be. I couldn't stand it. The Yankees get in here. You tell them not to kill me during the war, won't you? You tell them you couldn't stand it. Tell them to wound me if necessary, but not too seriously. It isn't funny, Lance. To get your troops. You know, for a Yankee, you're a pretty wonderful girl. For a rebel, you're pretty nice too. See you, honey. Goodbye. Bye, Lance. Going any place, were you? Not particularly. And that ain't your horse, is it? All saddled and ready to go. Boys, I'm sure Mr. Horton wouldn't think of leaving town without saying goodbye to his old friend Quantrill. Now, would you, Mr. Horton? didn't you? Bringing those rebel troops up. They're out there now waiting for you to come and bring them in. I'm afraid they're going to have a long wait, Captain Horton, because you're not about to join them. We came here for lead and we're not leaving until we get it. In the morning, you're taking us to the mine and loading our wagons. The Confederates will move in before then. Oh, no, they won't. They'll still be there waiting for you. What makes you think I'll do your dirty work for you? Because you want to live. You making a bargain with me? Yeah. When we've got all the lead we want, you can ride through town with us. When we get far enough away, we'll turn you loose, and then you can join your troops. You think I take your word on a thing like that? There's nothing else you can do but take my word. All right, boys, sit the man down. I got a little job I'm going to do tomorrow before we go. What would that be, Kate? I'm going to kill me a pigeon. Not my pigeon. You can have the feathers. <laughs> Listen to her. She thinks she's a man. <laughs> I can shoot and ride as good as a man, can I? Well, I reckon you can at that. Well, then you men tend to your business and let me tend to mine. Miss Maris right away. Sorry, she's asleep. Well, that don't make no difference. I gotta see her. Where is she? Upstairs. Wait, I'll get a point. I'll go with you. Who is it? Miss Maris, it's Jesse James. I've got to talk to you. Just a minute. Come here. You still look kind of brand new like. Is that what you wanted to tell me? Kate Quantrill is gunning for you. Doesn't she know when she's had enough? I reckon not. She's got a temper like nobody you've ever seen. When she gets crazy mad, there's nothing can stop her. She's aiming to kill you. Is she coming here? Right now, she's steaming herself up in a bar down the street. All the people in town have heard about it. They're waiting to see what's going to happen. You better go in hiding. Do nothing of the kind. I'll never run away from that woman. But you have to. She'll blast you to pieces. Oh, no, she won't. You mean you're not? No, I'm not afraid of her. You're set on facing her? I certainly am. Ever shoot a gun? All my life. Then do me a favor. Be as well armed as she is. Yeah, I'm going to get me 20,000 heads down one of these days. No 
Omaha Liquor. We're doing a lot of riding today. And I got a job to do first. Yeah? What? Like I told you, pigeon shoot. Oh, forget it. Do I tell you when to use your guns? But she's a woman. And I'm a woman. Maybe you'll be the one to get hurt. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. She's a babe in the woods, tenderfoot from the east. That why you're so nervous? Probably can't even pull the trigger. If that was me, I'd shoot that dame right between the eyes. Well, I'll declare if it were me, I'd be hiding in a broom closet somewhere. Why don't you wait for her to show up here? Because if you let a wild animal think you're afraid of it, it's bound to attack. Well, perhaps you're right. Back in Michigan, we didn't wait for wild beasts to close in on us. We went out after them. Mariscal just came out of the lead dollar, headed this way. Oh, she is, is she? And packing a gun. How do you like that? It really means it. All right, boys, stand back and away. I'll say one thing for the Maris girl, at least she's got courage. We'll put that on her tombstone. She had courage. I hope nothing happens to her. Yeah, I'm beginning to like the little boss. Why don't you try acting like a woman? You're too yellow to kill me. You were born a woman, but look at you. A bloodthirsty female, a disgrace to all women. What about you? Running a saloon, I suppose you're a symbol of virtue. Why don't you give up? She fights better than you, she shoots better than you. She even talks better than you. Yeah, and I bet she even cooks better than you. Come on, I'll see if I can patch up. We've got a job to do before we leave town. Can't get out of this town too fast. Honey, you were great. I thought I'd die. <laughs> Anderson. Wagons ready? They're waiting a mile out of town. Take five men and ride ahead. Start the wagons for the mine. We'll overtake you. Yes, sir. You two. Take her out and help her on her horse. All right, cut them loose. We'll head straight for the mine. And no tricks. No tricks. It looks like Quantrill's leaving town. And good riddance. I wonder what Lance is doing riding with him. Something funny's going on. Something very funny. You suppose he's thrown in with Quantrill? We'll soon know. I sent for the Yankees. The Union Army? Well, we can't let the rebels take my mines. Help! Help! Sergeant! Take your men around and head them off to the south. Yes, sir. Help! Quantra, we heading back this way? Of course not. Go on ahead, I'll catch up with you. Where are you going? I got an errand to do. Me and my brother can take care of it in two minutes. Well, don't waste much time with it. Come on, Jim. We're having her riding with us. 
Looks that way. I don't like it. Nobody asked you. Grab my gun. Horton's making a break for it. Your filthy hands off me. It's going to be real fun breaking you. Let go, younger. Idiots out of there. What's that? There it is, Captain. Tell him the charge. Hello. The Yankees. We're going to take them on? Long enough to get the younger boys out. Spread out. It's the Yankees. I'll be back for you, sweetheart. Glenda! Part of the gang, and it doesn't matter that I'm a woman, they'll kill me. But if you talk first, they'll kill Lance. Now listen to me and do what I say. Get up those stairs and hide. few of them. The rest rode south. We'd have been ambushed by rebel forces. What about Quantrill? He got away. So did the James boys and the Youngers. He got here in the nick of time. Quantrill had my foreman riding with him. What was Lance Horton doing with Quantrill? That bothered me, too. But I don't think it was by choice, because I seen a bolt from his horse and make a run for it. They were shooting at him when you boys got here. Where is he now? Over there in the lead dollar. I'll have a talk with him. Somebody else you might have a talk with. Yeah? Who's that? How would you like to get your hands on Kate Quantrill?
Stand by the door and see that nobody gets out. What if maybe somebody wants to get in? The bar's closed, and that goes for all of you. I'm looking for Lance Horton. I'm sorry, but he's very sick. Show me where he is. Come on, Sergeant. every room on this floor. Horton gonna live? If we could only get a doctor. There's only one medic, and a lot of men in this town need him right now. Oh, ask him, please, to come as quickly as possible. I hear he was riding with Quantrill. At gunpoint. I figured it that way. I'd like to ask him a few questions. He's scarcely in any condition to be questioned now. All right. Meantime, if you'll produce Kate for me. Kate? The bloodthirsty Mrs. Quantrill. If she's here, your men will find her. You trying to make things tough for me? What gives you that impression? Because we know she's here. You act as if you're trying to cover up for her. Now, why would I want to do that? Are you Sally Maris? Yes, I am. Then I don't know why you would. I heard just this morning she was gunning for you. You outshot her. I was lucky. There ain't no outlaw lady here, Captain. You sure? Yeah, we've seen every woman in the place. They're waiting downstairs. How many are there? Four. Not counting her. You try covering up for anyone as notorious as Kate Quantrill, and you'll be in trouble. A lot of trouble. You come on downstairs, too. Captain, we were wondering when you Yankees are going to move into town. Things will be a lot pleasanter now. What's your name, Captain? Never mind what my name is. I'm looking for Kate Quantrill. Kate Quantrill? Was that who that was? Who what was? You mean the girl I helped in off the street? Then you admit you helped somebody in. She went up the stairs. She went down the back stairs. There was a horse waiting out there for her. Yeah, she left at a fast gallop. Are you girls sure about that? She was wearing men's trousers and a shirt and a gun belt. That's her, all right. Get some riders out after her. Sergeant, bring up my horse. Yes, sir. Why, Captain, you're not leaving so soon. We've hardly had time to get acquainted. I've got to get Kate Quantrill. Won't I do? Why don't you pretend that I'm Kate Quantrill? I'll be back. Please hurry. 
I'll be waiting. She's probably gone by now anyhow. And maybe I can take her place. Well, I must say, you got real talent. Now at least you've got a chance to get out of town. I can't figure you. You could have shot me dead this morning and you didn't. What would I have gained? Ring and praise from everyone? And a bad conscience. And then you'd drag me in here and protect me from the Yankees. I had a reason. Yeah, I know, that man upstairs. But you could have shot me, killed me. It'd been much easier to keep me from talking that way. She doesn't think that way. I know, that's what mixes me up. Haven't you ever met anybody who was just plain decent? Yeah, once. 700 yesterdays ago. Her brother. Then Quantro came and tore me out of his arms. Oh, at first I fought him. I tried every way I knew how to escape. And later on, I, I became just like him. Passion for vengeance and hatred. Not trusting anybody. Suspicious of everything. But all the time, all the time it was Quattro that I really hated for what he'd done to me. So I took my rage out on the world. All hail the awakening of the ex-Kitty McCoy Cafe Singer. Two years too late. Two centuries and a dead heart too late. <laughs> Why don't human beings ever learn? <laughs> You mean, you mean you're through with Quantrill? With all of it. With all that's past. You know what I'd like now? I don't deserve it. I don't suppose I'll ever get it, but... I'd like to have a new start. A, a singing spot somewhere in a fancy saloon in New Orleans. That's where I was born, New Orleans. Old, warm, lovely French New Orleans. I don't suppose you or anyone else in this whole world can ever forgive me. He got some bullets in him. He'll need an immediate operation. It's going to be hard to arrange. John Pablo, will you leave us alone for a moment? Muy bien, señorita. What are we going to do? We've got to get you out of Border City. You're in danger every minute you're here. I'll never make it out. Oh, don't say that. They must have shot a few of Quantrill's boys. Any of them that got left behind bound to do some talking, particularly if he thinks he can wiggle out of a death sentence from the Union Army that way. Then somehow we've got to move you out at once. Take a miracle to save me. Afraid I'm all out of miracles. Oh, that's foolish talk. There are other things more important. Inside my coat over there, in the lining. What is it? The whole key to the lead lines. Shows everything. My troops couldn't move because they were waiting for it. Find somebody. Get it to them. You've got to have it. Yankee soldiers are back. That's 
stuffy captain. He couldn't have ridden very far. What does he want? They've come to arrest Lance Horton. They caught one of Quattro's men and he talked. They claim he's a spy. It isn't only the captain and his men. Looks like half the population is crowded into the saloon. I think they smell a lynching. The good citizens are saying that Lance broke the town's neutrality. They're practically violent. And you know Delilah Courtney. She'll see these executed just so she can say she kept the town neutral. Wait. Somebody might recognize you. You'd better stay up here. That's right. Keep watch. Get this stuff out of the way. I'm sorry, senor, but I have to sit here. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Clear that stairway. Yes, sir. Two of you men, forward. Clear that stairway. Yes, sir. and for no other reason. Because you tried to help me and because... Now maybe I can help you. And no matter what it costs, it's worth it. That's the real miracle, darling. The miracle is love. Get Lance to his Confederate troops. All right, I will. You can't go up there. Lance Horton has been mortally wounded. Wounded or not, we're going up after him. Remember, Captain, if the man is a spy, it's the business of the Neutrality Committee of Border City. We know what to do with him. All right. You're quite free to go after him. If he is a spy, I certainly don't want him in here. Well, I'm glad to hear you talk that way. Not quite so fast. Walter! Stand aside. Let me go. Captain Borders, ma'am. No one leaves here until after the arrest is made. Give me that! Captain, this should interest you. Well, I'm only interested in that spy upstairs. Sears, there ain't any spy upstairs. No matter what my brother did, you can't blame me for anything. What did your brother do? It seems, according to this, he was a Confederate spy. And with me in town the whole while he operated. What's his map? It's a map of my northern lead mines. Listen to this. To the commander of the Confederate forces, here's what you want. The Yankees suspect Lance Horton and will probably shoot him. If so, they will have killed an innocent man. The pig-headed beasts... Don't suppose that refers to you, Captain. You see, now the pig-headed beasts have no idea that I have taken over the task of undercover work for my brother. It's signed Sally Maris. A woman spy for the rebels has the gall to call us pig-headed beasts. What concerns me is we might have easily lynched an innocent man. Place the Maris woman under arrest. Just a minute. I'm afraid this is out of your hands, Captain. Authority greater than yours has entrusted me with maintaining the neutrality of Border City. In the past, we have hung any person who violated it. Sally Maris will be no exception. Take her away. <laughs> You can't let him do it, Captain. It's out of my hands. But she's a woman. And I'm a pig-headed beast. What are you thinking, Sergeant? I'm thinking he's got a head like a pig. What do we do? Get a wagon and a team of horses at the back door. Get a man you can trust. Jenny, get old Pete. All right, come with me. out of order, Sergeant. But to lynch a woman is the last word in barbarianism. She broke the neutrality. Worse than anyone ever broke it. But she is such a little girl. Makes no difference. And you, shut up. You fools, you absolutely 
absolute fools. Sally Maris is not a spy. Please, please don't. It's all right, honey. We slipped Lance Horton out of town. He's with the rebels. He'll get a good doctor. I demand to know what you're talking about. Sally Maris wrote the note attached to the map to take the suspicion off from the man she loved and onto herself. She was trying to protect him. He's a Confederate captain. How do you know about that? This is going to come as an awful shock to you, Captain. My name is Kate Quantrill. Sergeant, get three minutes. Follow me. You don't... Fools, then compoops, fiends. You see what you almost did? What we almost did. That noble woman who sits there. That noble woman who was willing to give her life for a man. A mere mortal man. Was nearly lynched by you who claim yourselves to be men. Lift her down and set her free. Sally, honey, come on, we'll take you. we can go without running into a rebel ambush. Too bad we couldn't overtake her. Sergeant, I believe the less said about this incident, the better. Yes, sir, Captain. But, uh, but what? She sure sang pretty, didn't she? Hello! just came in to congratulate you. I hear that in a little over a month, you paid off all your brother's debts. The way you've been driving the customers in here, we were bound to do well. Oh, they're just men. Easy to drive. What do you have? Name your poison. Thank you. I never drink. Uh, what have you heard from Kate Quantrill? She's in New Orleans. Very happy. Singing under the name of Kitty McCoy. Lance Corton is in town. a nerve riding in here in that uniform, trying to stick your neck in a noose. You know this town's neutral. The whole country's neutral now, Mrs. Courtney. The war ended yesterday in Richmond, Virginia. Who won? Nobody won. We just quit fighting, that's all. Ah! Ah! The war is over! Chop down that hanging tree. This is like a goldfish bowl. Kind of crowded up in the north. Let's go south. <laughs> Honey, it's just lovely down south. 